Hello. Welcome to your new gateway to the Internet of Things. In just a few short minutes, you'll be able to set up your gateway, connect to the Internet, and even create some software automation scripts. Don't worry. No software engineering experience is necessary. You'll be up and running in no time. You're probably eager to get started, so let's get going. Feel free to follow along. Don't worry about doing something wrong. The system is very robust and there's little you can do that can't be undone. Step 1. Antennas. If your gateway includes cellular or Wi-Fi, please install the included antennas. The cellular antennas must be screwed into the terminals of the gateway labeled Cell Main and Cell Augs. The two cellular antennas look identical. To differentiate between the cellular and Wi-Fi antennas, take a look at the screw connector at the bottom of the antenna. The screw connector of the cellular antenna includes a single prong sticking out of the center of the connector. The Wi-Fi antennas must be screwed into the terminals of the gateway labeled Antenna C and Antenna D. The two Wi-Fi antennas look identical. The screw connector at the end of the Wi-Fi antennas include a center hole and do not have a center prong in the center of the connector. Step 2. Internet Connectivity If you're using cellular connectivity for the Internet, then it's likely your supplier has already configured the gateway for immediate use. Otherwise, take a look at the included Quick Start Guide for configuration details. If you are using Ethernet connectivity for the Internet, then plug one end of the Ethernet cable into the gateway connector labeled WAN slash LAN. If your network supports dynamic IP addresses, or DHCP, then connect the other end of the Ethernet cable to your Internet router or hub. If your network requires the use of static IP addresses, your supplier may have already configured the gateway for this. Otherwise, refer to the Quick Start Guide for details. Step 3. Power. Connect the included power supply to the gateway and apply power. When first powered, the status LED will initially be orange. Other LEDs will turn on or off during the initialization sequence. After a few minutes, the LED will blink green, about once per second. This indicates the gateway has completed its core initialization. Other LEDs may also be turned on at this point. Your gateway may include other specialized software or hardware. If this is the case, the initialization process may require additional time. For example, if you have a Z-Wave radio installed, the Z-Wave initialization continues beyond the core initialization and is complete sometime after the Z-Wave LED turns on. At this point, your gateway is ready for use. Okay, the hardware part of the setup process is now complete. Let's set up the software. Step 4. Log in to Syscript or create a new Syscript account. For support of the Internet of Things, your Syslink gateway includes Syscript, if licensed, or Syscript Lite. Syscript Lite provides remote access and control of many properties of the gateway, such as the network IP address, the number of bytes transferred, and other gateway details. If your gateway includes temperature and motion hardware, Syscript Lite also provides remote access to this information. Syscript is a simple graphical user interface that provides the ability to program scripts that execute locally on the gateway. The licensed version of Syscript provides additional advanced access and control for external devices. Example external devices include devices attached to the USB port or wireless Zigbee, Z-Wave, or Bluetooth devices. Setup and configuration of Syscript requires just a few short minutes. You can access Syscript with your smartphone, tablet, or computer. No application installation is necessary. Simply use a current version of your favorite browser, such as Chrome, Explorer, or Safari. Go to the following URL, sso.systech.com. If you previously created a Syscript account for any gateway in the past, then simply use your existing user credentials to log in. Otherwise, select the Register a New User option. If you register as a new user, please include your activation code that you received with your gateway. Your activation code will apply the appropriate access rights to your Syscript account. However, you can also apply your activation code at a later time. Be sure to remember your account username and password for the future, as that will be required to access Syscript for this gateway and other gateways that may be linked to your account. 
there is an option to recover your username and password if you forget it. You may be asked to enter a gateway activation password. For this, you will simply enter the activation password found on the bottom of your gateway. If no activation password exists on the gateway, then enter the gateway serial number as the activation password. If you'd like to add an existing activation code to an existing account, simply log into your account, then use the Use Activation Code from the menu options. Step 5. Initialize. To access the script, select the SysScript square tile under the Applications drop-down list. A new window will open with a drop-down list of all the gateways associated with your SysScript account. Select Gateways to expose the entire list. From this list, find the gateway that you would like to work with. New gateways will have a default gateway name of the serial number preceded with the GW, for example, GW398254. When you have located the gateway of interest, select the Details button of the gateway. This will bring you to a screen showing current status information of the gateway. It is usually desirable to rename the gateway to something more meaningful. Simply click on the gateway name to bring up a renaming dialog box. Also, you must set the initial time zone and location of the gateway. This is required to enable time-based scripts. Select and edit the latitude, longitude, and time zone properties of the gateway. Select the pencil icon near the property you intend to change. Edit the time zone property last since editing the time zone will cause the gateway to automatically reboot. This is normal, and you can continue to explore the SysScript website while the gateway reboots. Step 6. Access your gateway. From the menu, select Devices. This will bring you to a screen showing the devices currently attached to that gateway. New gateways will typically have only a single device, which is the gateway itself. While you are viewing the screen, you can see many of the accessible gateway properties. These are properties that you can access remotely or properties you can create scripts for. For example, you can access the current gateway internal temperature, the local IP address, the cellular signal strength, and other attributes. There you have it. Your gateway is now set up, linked to your account, and ready for action. The setup process is a one-time event and will not need to be repeated for this gateway. If you'd like to add additional gateways, simply repeat the same process. Now that your gateway is set up, if you'd like to learn more about how to remotely access and control your gateway, please select one of the following topics. Thank you, and enjoy your gateway to the Internet of Things.